everybody, it's Alice K. Recklehouse from Threshold of Hineni, and this is part, I don't know what, in um, my series where I'm talking about uh, how God has blessed me and gotten me through this time. Um, I'm doing this to reframe things for myself um, so that I don't get like super depressed leading up to the anniversary of Bill's death and um, just a lot of personal anniversaries that we have during this time, during June and July. Um, so I was afraid that it would be a hard time that I would get caught up in depression. And um, so I'm just being preactive and talking about uh, ways that God's blessed me since Bill's death, how I was blessed by being married to him and stuff like that. Okay, so I've got I brainstormed a bunch of things and I'm still adding to it and I put them all in this basket and I'm just pulling one out each day to focus on and so this one is going to be I have no idea ahead of time what it is oh, okay who the four men who were with Bill while he was dying um so first of all let me take you back to um, something that I said in like the second I think episode of this series was that um, God had right before the trooper came to talk to me and tell me what had happened um, God had drawn me into worship and the song that he had me singing was uh, Chris Tomlin's song Chris Tomlin or Chris Rice I always get confused one of them um, the God of Angel Armies is always by my side um, so I found out, I don't know, a couple weeks or maybe three weeks after Bill's death, um, a man emailed me. I don't really remember the details very well, but I think it was the brother of somebody who had been there at the scene of the accident. And he told me what he knew about what had happened. And, uh, and he told me his brother's name. And so I looked him up online. I didn't actually... I can't remember. Maybe I did hear from him. I can't remember, but um, not very much. You know, I think I asked him some questions and I never got an answer, which is okay. I mean, not everybody wants to talk about stuff like that. And so I completely understand. And, um, but anyway, so he had posted some pictures on his Facebook. And so I saw that and I saw his comments about it and stuff. Um, and then a little while later, another man got a hold of me and, um, he was telling me some things about the accident and I, I, it was months ago and I don't really remember exactly what he said, but at one point he had said something, oh, I had asked if there were any knives around because Bill had a, you know how the, those big wood blocks, a knife block. He had that in, behind him in the cab of the truck behind his seat and he had a blanket over and a bunch of other things. Um, behind him and the side windows don't open up they just like open up that much and he never opened them so I know that nothing went out those windows but the knives had been found all over the ground and um, a bunch of them were in the back of the truck and one particular knife that meant a lot to me because it really reminded me of Bill um, I hadn't been able to find and so in our conversation I asked this man if um, if he had seen any of those knives and he told me that there was well I can't remember exactly what he told me but I asked him specifically about this knife with a ram's head and he said yes he had found that one he well he asked me if Bill was a knife collector and I said no and then later on I asked him about this knife with a ram's head and he said yes he had found it he had found it with the hilt of the knife dug into the ground and the blade sticking up and so he didn't really he wasn't sure if it had anything to do with the accident or not um, it got thrown really hard, obviously, and it obviously came through the front of the cab. Stuff was probably flying all around and everything, um, and it would have gone out the windows, which is really terrifying to think that those things could have been flying past Bill's face or something. I don't know. Um, he said that he didn't look all cut up or anything. So, um, and you know, I am aware of the possibility that people who told me things about the scene of the accident very well could have been uh, protecting me and not telling me everything. But um, anyway, so he had found that knife. And so he's still holding on to that for me. I really hope to meet him and his family at some point. His wife had run 
um, when, when the accident happened, he had run to Bill and his wife had run to the other person who was dead already. And um, I pray for her still because what she saw was very gory. Um, and I just can't imagine how she's managing with that. But anyway, I'm really hoping to meet them at some point. I'm just not ready yet. And they've been wonderfully patient about it and everything. And he's saving that knife for me, which is just really special. But anyway, so one of the things that I heard from various people who had been there, um, there were four men who ran to the scene of the accident when it happened. And each one of them, I think somebody said that they were all believers. And each one of them said that they were not supposed to be there at that time. You know, like one man had missed his turn off. And so he was there. And another guy on a motorcycle had stopped underneath the bridge that was right before where the accident took place. And he had stopped to tighten some things. So he was at the right place at the right time. And, you know, just everybody had a story of why they were there. And um, another thing is that one of the men was a, a, a military medic. Um, I can't remember, Army or Marines. And one of the men, uh, the guy that I've been in touch with the most, is a former Marine and actually had gone to school close to where I grew up um, for the Marines. Um, and, and he was also, I think, a former fire chief. And so... You know, these two guys knew what to do, you know, before the ambulance or anybody got there. And so they were able to put a tourniquet on him and um, talk to him. Bill wasn't talking back, but he was kind of moaning. So they felt that he could understand them. And um, and they thought he was going to make it. And so they were kind of like joking with him about what it was going to be like in the hospital and stuff. And um, anyway, they were there for him. And I think one of the men was like holding his hand. And... You know, it just, I don't want to say that those men were angels. They were definitely men, you know, but that whole thing of God's angel army being with us. And I do think that there were actual angels there. Even while the accident was happening, I have no doubt of that. I know that, you know, it might feel like God turned his back for a minute or his guardian angel, you know, messed up or something like that. Um, but God knows all this ahead of time, like I said in another video, and he has this, he has the power to stop things, but he chooses not to for certain reasons, and um, that we don't know. We can't know, and we can't understand, uh, but I, I trust him, even though it's really, really hard for me sometimes. It is so hard for me, but I do trust him, and, um, you know, I, I just think that having those men there was part of his plan. You know, he didn't leave Bill to die by himself. You know, he had people with him. And he had people he could probably hear because they felt like maybe he was responding a little bit through some of his groaning and stuff. And um, so, yeah, so those men were there and those men are so precious to me. And I'll probably only meet the one of them because I really haven't had contact with the other three. But um, it's just so comforting that they were there with Bill. And that's a huge blessing. And when I think about how the accident must have been for him, how terrifying it must have been to go down that hill and how scary and painful, I mean, physically painful, what he went through was, um, it's just, sometimes it really freaks me out. And, but then I think of those men who were there with him and I know that God sent those men there to be with him and to not let him be alone during that really hard time. I couldn't be there. I didn't even know about it, but he had other people who were there with him. And I think that they were just the right people. And, um, anyway, thank you for letting me share these things. You guys, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry that I, I'm crying a lot more than I thought I would. Um, but at the same time, it just feels really good to share about these things and to focus on the blessings and that is helping me so much and so I really appreciate you listening and I hope that you're getting something from it too. I love you all. I will talk to you later. Let's pray for each other, okay? Bye-bye.